Pulse of Torment is a game that I've been really enjoying and I just wanted to go and share the knowledge with you that I think is going to help a lot of players that might be struggling or for anyone that just wants to get a better idea of what's going on. I just want to really help you guys get started on the right foot and give you some tips that are going to help improve your gameplay. So before we get into the actual gameplay information, just want to say for anyone that's here that is just struggling to finish a boss or maybe clear a map or something like that, don't feel bad at all. The whole point of this game and this genre is to scale your power over time. So it might not be today, might not be tomorrow, and it might not even be in a week, but you are going to be able to clear the content. And I hope that some of these things that I'm going to tell you right now are going to help you progress further in the game. So the first thing and probably the most important thing if you take anything away from this video, make sure that you are playing to your character's strengths. So each hero has specific skills that are more beneficial to the character than other abilities. Now you can tell which skills these are by the little suffixes that are on the description of the skill. You'll see strong and you'll see weak. So strong, obviously, this character is much better at this specific stat. So for example, swordsmen are very good with vitality. They get additional health as opposed to say an archer who is actually strong at movement speed. So an archer is gonna get 9% movement speed bonus where normal characters might get around six. And then you also have the weak aspect of your skills. And for these weaks, you might not even wanna consider scaling into them and you might wanna consider, oh, okay, so for sorceress, right? Your HP regen is weak. So you probably want to avoid just getting hit in general as best as possible. And I know that example is a very generic, like if you don't get hit, you're not going to take damage. So free win, right? But specifically for this game, it is a little bit harder to actually avoid getting hit. So with these characters that have weak HP regen, like the sorcerer, you might want to go more into block, which is actually strong at. That way, when you do get hit, you have a higher chance of either taking less damage or no damage at all. So make sure that you are playing towards the strengths of your characters. The second and probably second most important thing is definitely going to be specking into defense. I know playing a game where you see big numbers and big numbers good and you just want to kill as many mobs as possible. You kill them before they touch you. You don't need defense, right? However, it's going to be inevitable that you are going to get hit by things. And especially when you're first playing through the game, you don't have a lot of items. You don't have a lot of additional stats. Your HP regen is going to be awful. You're going to take significantly more damage from enemies. And if you're not very quickly specking into defense early on in the game, you are going to struggle probably past 20 minutes, basically. So make sure that you are specking into health. You are specking into HP regen, you make sure you pick up block, you pick up parry. All of these are very important stats that will save you. Third, now this one might not be extremely relevant because it doesn't make your life that much easier, but you don't actually have to kill any of the bosses except for the last boss. This happened for me on the second map. The Queen Worm is the last boss that spawns before the final boss, and it goes underground basically. It's pretty annoying to actually damage because it's very good at hiding and it actually runs away from the character if you try to get close to it. So it's a little bit slower to actually go down and you can actually just not even kill it and still get to the final boss. When the final boss spawns, everything on the map dies no matter what it is. If it's a normal mob, if it's an elite mob, or if it's a boss mob, they will all die. So if you're struggling with a certain boss, technically you do not have to kill them. Obviously, it's a little bit detrimental because you won't get that extra piece of gear. You might not get that scroll if it's an elite mob. But if it's the last boss or the last elite mob and you're just really struggling with it, I know on the bridge, for example, the Hydra boss is a big pain in the butt. He's just very hard to target. And there's also a lot of really annoying mobs that spawn. You don't even have to damage him if you don't want to. Do you have to constantly dodge additional AoE attacks from these bosses? Yes. But if that's something you're more comfortable with, you might want to consider just avoiding them in general. I feel like this is mostly relevant in your first couple of playthroughs before your characters have started scaling. Once you start getting those items and you start getting stats, you're going to have a much better time. You're going to be more than likely able to kill those elite mobs and bosses. Uh, my fourth tip is 
don't be in a rush to do the new content when you unlock it. When you get the second and the third map, your characters are most likely not going to be in the best state, basically, to take on those maps. The first map is very straightforward, and it's a really good place for you to farm gold, actually. And you can use that gold to both get the stats up, and the other nice thing is, since you're able to complete the map more often, you have a much larger selection of items that drop, as you're able to actually kill all three bosses that drop items for you, which means you're able to more than likely get an item back through the well system and once you get that full gear set or just close to a full gear set you're gonna have a much better time with those second and third maps than you would if you did not level up those stats and get gear so don't be in a hurry i know you want to go check out the new stuff but the map difficulty does scale pretty well and that second map is going to be difficult when you play it the third map is going to be difficult when you unlock it so you might consider playing the first map a couple more times so that you're able to scale your character stats a little bit better. And then fifth, speaking of items, there is a necklace that I do believe is just the best in-slot necklace, unless you're going for a very, very specific build. And that's going to be the necklace that gives you 50% extra experience. There's a few other necklaces that you might want to consider because one of them increases your damage based off how many enemies are in your pickup zone, which it can be a big increase in damage right however in my opinion i feel like there's never going to be anything better than an actual level as this is going to increase your whole character not just the damage specifically this might be very important for a specific build it must be very important for getting some defensive stats if you're able to level faster and it makes the early game significantly easier so you're able to better scale in the late game. You unlock this necklace by leveling up 500 times. So once you do that, you're able to unlock it. I would immediately try and get it into the well. It looks like this. And I do believe that it is the best item in the game just in regards to what it does for you. A little informational tip is that if it seems like there are gems disappearing on the floor, don't worry about it. They're not despawning. They're just stacking. So gems go from blue to yellow to pink to just that gem stack. And this game has a system where as gems drop on the floor, they actually stack together. So basically just clears up clutter as well as probably helps the game run a little bit. So don't worry if you're not able to pick everything up immediately. You are able to get all of the experience that drops. The last little tidbit that I want to talk about is how important it is to actually destroy those destructible objects in the map. There are a lot of good items that drop in there. Obviously it's just health and coins as well as the hand object that brings all of the XP gems to you. But in the early game they are very 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 important to making your runs last much longer. There are potions inside these destructible objects that heal you for 50 and 50 HP is a lot. So make sure that you are at least trying to continuously move through the map and not just stay in one area because it takes them a little bit to respawn and if you are in the same static area for a long time you're not going to have the availability to hit as many of those objects as possible. So make sure that you're moving back and forth up and down around the map. That way you're able to hopefully get those hands that are going to draw all that EXP towards you as well as keep yourself in a very healthy state when you don't have a ton of HP regen. That's pretty much everything. Just kind of some very general ideas that I do think will make you play significantly better. If you guys have any very specific questions, feel free to ask me. I would be more than happy to help you out. If you've looked at kind of like the past videos that I've done on this channel, I went through a phase for a couple months where I was just 100%ing different games in this genre so it is a good genre that i'm very very comfortable with and i'm more than happy to help you out so if you have any questions let me know if you guys have any tips yourself put them down below for anyone that stops by and then as always i appreciate the support and i hope to see you on the next one